and welcome to Economics Unit 5. This video is all about the global economy. So first let's talk a little bit about the past. In 1987 and again in 2008, the U.S. stock market crashed horribly. 2008 in particular was a really big drop. And this, of course, had immediate consequences for Americans. Uh, unemployment rates shot up, uh, and even years afterwards, it was difficult for people to find jobs or full-time jobs. It really had a major negative impact on people's lives here in America, but not just in America. In fact, in both crashes, the entire world felt the effects of the stock market crash. But why is that? How did a crash that happened in one country affect almost the entire rest of the world in Asia, Europe, everywhere? Well, it all has to do with the concept of globalization. Globalization is the economies of the world becoming more and more tied together. And one reason why this has been happening is because of the increased number, the increased influence of what is known as multinational firms. Multinational firms are firms that do business or have offices or factories in many countries. Now these businesses are owned by people that live in one country, but they build all these offices and factories and they hire local citizens. It's, they might bring some people from their home country over to run things. But most of their employees are going to come from the countries that they build those offices and factories in. For example, Microsoft and McDonald's are both American-based countries, but they're in the top 25 employers for the entire world. They have a presence everywhere. So if those two companies are affected by something at home like the stock market crashing, less investment into their countries, they're going to have to cut back and that's going to affect the economies of the countries that they've set up shop in. Now, Even though the shops and offices that they build in other countries are owned by them, they're considered a different branch of the firm. That's what a foreign affiliate is. A foreign affiliate is a branch of a multinational firm. So when you see a McDonald's in Taiwan, in China, in Yugoslavia, in any other country besides America, uh, those are foreign affiliates of the McDonald's Corporation. Now when companies like McDonald's and Microsoft build offices, build factories in other countries, that is a way of investing in those countries. Now they're getting profits too, it's not all one-sided, but it is investing because those people benefit from the jobs that the companies build in those countries. Now true, some of those jobs are not very good, and some of those jobs are taking advantage of those people. But that's not always the case. Many jobs are also really good, high-paying jobs, especially in some of the technological fields. Now, there are two types of foreign investment. There is direct foreign investment, and there's regional cross-border investments. And the only difference is that a direct foreign investment is the purchase by foreigners of real estate or businesses in other countries that are not next to them. For example, Ford is an American company and Brazil is not a neighbor of America, so that is a direct foreign investment of an American multinational firm into a foreign country. Regional cross-border investments are when a nation invests in another country that they share a border with. For example, Japanese firms investing in South Korea. There's water in between the two countries, but those two countries are considered to be neighbors. They share a border, even if that border is on the water. Now, another piece of evidence that proves just how intertwined other economies are into America, beyond just the great amount of direct foreign investment and regional cross-border investments that we are involved in, also is the fact that America's language is English and English is the world's business language. Now, to be clear, that does not mean that more people in the world speak English than any other country. In fact, Chinese is technically the number one most spoken language in the world. French and Spanish are also widely spoken. They are spoken in way more countries 
at a social level among people than English ever has. The difference is that when any of these countries come together, the shared language they can all depend on to be able to conduct business in is English. And in fact, English is such an important language for businesses, it's also instrumental in writing and coding for the software that these businesses use to conduct their business with, to conduct transactions and monitor investments and watch the stock market. Microsoft Windows, that's on almost every PC in the world. All of these things were built using English language at its foundation and therefore understanding English means you can understand a lot more than just how to speak to others. You can understand the software that's used to conduct this business in. So as a result, English, while not the number one most spoken language, is the world's business language and therefore anyone that's going to have an impact on the global economy and have a significant impact on their economy back home needs to speak English. Another reason why America is so intertwined with the rest of the world, why their economies depend so much on ours being healthy is because the United States has invested a huge amount into the rest of the world. In fact, 40% of all foreign investment of both types that I talked about earlier is done by America. And the other 60% is the rest of the world combined. America is by far the leader. In fact, America is so much invested in other countries that some of them worry about American culture beginning to override their own culture. And another final reason why so many countries will be affected by America's economic health is the popularity of U.S. securities, meaning a lot of countries like to invest in America by buying our bonds, getting loans from us, loaning money to us. And the reason why is because we are so stable. We don't have bloody civil wars. We don't have major terrorist attacks happening on a regular basis. 9-11 was a shock to the world because that kind of thing just doesn't happen in America. That's why people from across the world invest in America because we're generally safe. But we're not perfect. So even though we're usually safe, when we do crash, it affects a lot of people because a lot of people across the world are so heavily invested in us as well as us being so heavily invested in them. And that is why America, everything it does, it has to be very, very careful about the policies it sets even the ones that should only affect people at home, because even things that should only affect the economy at home will have great ripple effects across the rest of the world. And that's all the time we have today to talk about the global economy. If you have any questions, let me know in class. Thank you.